Okay, so I want to show you how to use a, uh, a Docker container. Um, the, the, the book actually uses a lot of different libraries. Um, and you can install those uh, one by one in your machine. Um, you can go through a crazy thing and do it with um, Google Colab and install like a lot of them. I'm not sure how well they would work in Google Colab, um, but you could try and they might work fine. Um, I don't really have a script for doing that. So I found that the easiest way to get all of the libraries installed and working together is to use a Docker container. Now a Docker container is kind of like a, a virtual machine. It's like an environment that's, uh, that's in some ways isolated from your machine that has where you can specify all the packages you need. Um, it is true that Conda has Conda environments and they kind of do uh, similar things. Um, but I think that the, um, that th there are some, there are some issues with, you know, windows or, or, or Mac and using a, a container, which is based on Ubuntu kind of standardizes a little bit more and you're likely to get the same results everywhere. So the first thing we need to do in this, in this setup is that we're going to need to have files on our desktop or not on our desktop, but somewhere in our, our drive um, that we want to be able to see inside of this um, virtual environment in this inside of the container. Um, and then that way we can edit them and do things with them and download some data. And then we have them on our, on our, our machine and then we can, you know, upload them. So if we're working on a homework problem or a project, um, you know, we have access to that, not just from inside of the virtual, uh, the, the container, but from, from our machine. And uh, one nice thing about containers is you can move them between, um, between machines. Um, this directory, you know, you, you'd have to move manually, but it's, it's kind of like there's the directory where it has the files that you want to work on. And then you have the container, which can see those files. So, the first thing I want to do is create this directory where I'm going to have some some files. So um, I'm doing this on Windows, but doing it in Mac is not that different. Um, so you know you have uh, some way to get to your files um, and. Um, I'm going to assume that, you know, you have a home directory like this. Um, and then we can create a, uh, a new folder in here. So one way is we could just create a new folder and we can call it uh, M M L for T um, machine learning for trading files, um, and that's that's fine. Or uh, I'm going to just do it another way, which is suppose I have a shell open, a terminal open. So this is Windows PowerShell, but uh, Macintosh would have terminal, and then I can do M K, and I'm in you know the C drive, whatever my home directory is, I can do MK dear, and then, you know, ML 4T files. And um, that, that you can see this down here, it made the, it made the directory as well. So either way would work. And then um, just thinking ahead, I'm going to want to have um, the, the repository from the book. Um, so if you, you know, you go to the book or you, you just Google, um, uh, Stefan Jansen machine learning for trading. Um, 
you get to this repo here. And, and each one of these directories, um, I clicked on the first one, which is the, the worst one to click on, but let's say uh, the second one, you know, has a bunch of different uh, folders in it for um, running examples in the book. And so using these notebooks, you can get the data that, that some of the data that you might want to use, um, at least the data for the examples in the book. Um, so in order to get that, uh, let's go back here. Um, this is the link that I'm going to want to use. So from inside this directory, I'm going to say git clone. And that will bring down all of those files that um, are in the repo with all the notebooks and everything. So, and then I will create, I, I've, I've created a container, so I'm going to create the container and I'll have the container able to see that. But while that's downloading, I am going to need to install. Um, so if we go to Docker desktop, Um, I would install the Windows version and uh, if we go to the if download and install so here's the instructions for Windows and there's two different backends um, I like the WSL2 backend so there's some instructions on installing that. And um, you may have to install WS, w, um, SL2. Um, and to do that, you would just uh, and you can Google uh, Windows Subsystem Linux to install and there's a bunch of instructions on how to do that so I'm not going to go through all of those steps if you uh, you can go through those steps or you can use the other method it has two different methods for installation I've got this installed already so once it's installed you'll have uh, you'll have a uh, You'll be able to take Docker Desktop um, on your Windows machine, or if it's a Macintosh, you will have that app, and you click on it, and and this is this is what the desktop app looks like. So you might not have all these other. You might just be empty here. Um, this is the image thing. Um, there's no containers running at the moment. There's no volumes. So um, and I don't use the dev environment. So. But, but this is what this looks like. And because it's installed, um, if I type docker.exe, in this case, help, um, you'll see that you, know, you, you, you get something, right? There is, there is some Docker thing, and um, it has a help, a help folder. So once I've got that, uh, I'm going to just get out briefly from this uh, directory that I'm in. And I am going to um, so the Docker images. There's there's all kinds of different Docker images that exist. Um, so this is called Docker Hub. And there's all kinds of, uh, I have an account. You don't have to make an account to, to, to do what I'm doing now, I don't think. Um, but it has different 
repository so you could set up different environments if you want to and different um, uh, and, and store them or you, there's a there's a ton of public repositories um, that you, you can get access to that have you know different different software already pre-installed um, but this is the one that we're going to be working with um, this is the one I've set up that has um, that I've, I, I've, I've debugged about half the the notebooks uh, from the book um, and installed I think all of the the libraries needed um, so um, oops Okay, so in order to do this, um, see this Docker push? I don't want to push, I want to pull. So this would be, push would be if I wanted to create a new, a new one in my repository, and I don't. But what I can do is, this should be default. This should be P U L L pull, and what this will do is go get this um, image. Um, so it gets the image, and then you know it may take it may take a little longer than it just did for me, but you get the image, and then once you have the image, you can see it in the in the Docker desktop program. So opening the program. And you'll see under images, you'll see this, uh, this line here. So I want to run this thing. You see there's a run button. I could use that. Or I could do it from the command line. So I'm going to do it from the command line, and then I'll do it from the, from the other one. Um, so there's a little bit of. Uh, it's kind of a little bit more complicated from the command line when I have to run. I have to run um, docker exe, sorry. And then um, run is the command, and then dash it to keep it running. Um, and then rm because I don't need the container afterwards. And then dash v because I want it to show, I want to be able to see some that directory I created. So users Michael ML for T dash files home to so I took this um, container and I modified a container that came from the Jupyter project. So um, they have this virtual user called Jov Jovan Jovian um, okay so this will set it up so that that's um, that's the directory that that I will see it in and I have to I also want to be able to see it from my browser on my laptop so or not my laptop on my on my machine here, so um, I need to expose the port, and then finally I need to get that particular that name of that um, container. So um, is this one here, and with a default tag? So. Um, I could copy that, I guess. No, I can't. Okay, so it's okay. I'll just type it. Make sure that you use colons and then a semicolon and then if I hit return here you will see that I get this link here 
And if I do control click, it will actually bring up my browser. And, oops. What you should see here is that it's got those files. And if I click into that directory that I got from online, you can see that this is some of the, you know, notebooks that are up there and you know that that you can download some of the information download some of the data which then you can use so that's and and, and go through those to, to understand how the book does things um, and if we want to create our own stuff um, that we will be able to get access to. We want to do it in this ML so we can create our own directory here. Um, and then I can create a notebook. Let's see. Uh, right click. You don't have to do this. I'm just, just, this is my little demo for um, a random walk. Um, just want to show you that, you know, you, you, you basically have a Jupyter notebook and, and you can access it and, and then create a Jupyter notebook that, that you can, you can get on your, on your directory, um, but it has all the libraries. So, for example, um, let's see, x equals np dot random dot random thousand elements. These are numbers are from zero to one, and then cum sum to make it a random walk, and then I can do a plt plot. Um, np And then, if we go to the file explorer, and we go to C users. My files and there's that random random walk um, file. So you know we can we can work in here. It'll have all the the libraries necessary, and then you know we'll we still have access to the files just from our desktop. You know from our, from our file handler, and and then we can upload them or whatever, do it whatever we want with them, and then we can shut it down. 
Control C. Um, now there's another way to do this, so I'll just show you the other way to run it once you've got it. Um, so if I go to the um, Docker desktop, so I could do run and then do these optional settings and say, well, you know, I want this container. Uh, I don't know, I'll call it ML for T notebook container. Whatever. This is not important. Um, this should be 8888. This should be you click here and then we can go look for the directory that we want, um, which is let's see colon users mm -hmm. select folder. So that's there. And then inside the container, it'll just be called this part. Um, well, actually, I have to type that. I think I have to do the whole thing, so let me, let me do that. So it's that whole home, Joven, blah, blah, blah. And then that's probably it. And I just run it. And it's running. And then there is... Um, there's open in browser. Now this almost would work. If I click here, you see it has this whole thing about token authentication and like, oh no, how come I can't get to it? And I, I don't know what the password is. So that's confusing. Um, but instead what I can do is click on it and you see it says it has this whole thing. And then here, it has the same thing I saw in the in the in the terminal. So if I if I highlight that and I do I think control click again or actually just copy this into the browser. So it's that long number at the end where it says token, that's the token that it, it needs. Um, so copy and now I'm gonna open the browser. Make sure it's big enough, yeah. And then put this in here. And then you'll see the Jupyter Lab come up. Okay, so now we can actually um, get working with this. So I think this video.